to correct me. I'm going to share a little bit about her life when the time comes for that. It's been shared with me. And then Allie, the granddaughter, is going to come up and she's going to correct whatever I get wrong, aren't you, Allie? <laughs> she's going to share a few more uh, personal remembrances. Uh, and she's got a lot going on in her life and heart. And a difficult day for this family, but you've been through this before, haven't you? You've experienced some loss and, and you have stayed together and you have ministered to each other. And you are a blessing to each other. Continue to be. After the service today, we will uh, the the, the graveside funeral service will take place at another date. So, following the service and, and the ritual that uh, the, the nursing honor guard will provide, we're going to have a benediction, and then we will go downstairs, and you're invited to to participate in a meal. And uh, just a, a less formal time, some of you to catch up, some of you to, to meet one another, all of us to maybe share stories about sharing that there's something that happens in the healing, healing and, and brings us close together in that. So uh, thanks be to God for that gift in the midst of a difficult time. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Because I live, you shall live also. These are the words of our Lord. They are for believing, they are for holding on to hold on to them. And I pray, my friends, that they may hold on to you. Let's pray. Well, eternal God, you have shared with us Sharon's life. Before she was ours, she was yours. For all that she's given us to make us what we are. And for that part of her which lives and grows in each of us. And for her life that in your love will never end. We give you thanks. And now we offer her back into your arms this day, Lord. And I'd ask that you would comfort all of us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, give us courage that we might face not only this moment, but the future, whatever it brings on a grave. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer together. Make us faithful to serve each other. And give us to know that peace and joy is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
you have in your memorial folder there uh, something of uh, Sharon's life, and if we get a chance to read through that, of course, just very kind of brief and, and a lot between there, of course, I'm going to share a, a little bit, and family will share with me, and if I get it wrong again, uh, I'm open to being corrected, always, particularly about important matters of, of a person's life, especially a, a life that's is vital and, and connected, a you know, person of faith, and love, and caring. That's what Sharon. She was born September 21st, 1943. Wahoo. Raskin and her parents, Elmer and Allie Robinson Anderson. Uh, and her, her father, as I understand, worked in a court branch. And uh, Allie, uh, the grandma, she, great grandma, worked in a, a hospital, is that right? Did I get that right? So what is it? In the kitchen in the hospital. <laughs> and she was the baby, right? Or five, did I get that right? Okay, make sure you get that right. So a good distance between her and her older sister. So as the baby, she would have fit in that typical line that uh, you know, uh, some people have about uh, workplace origin and, and she would have been that fun loving kind of that connected with others easily of course she fit that in space and of course attended Wahoo School and graduated uh, 19, the class of 1961 and, uh, and I saw uh, one of the condolences left online uh, Jim left James is that you, James, back there? No, James uh, there had left one. That she was the one that would bring scrapbooks to all the all the um, alumni gatherings and she kind of a caretaker of the memories of that. And the family knows that very well. You know, uh, daughter, granddaughter, grandkids, do all the grandkids have a scrapbook? Everybody's got a scrapbook that she made for them in a way of, of capturing remembrances, and, and I think some of those will be on display downstairs, right? We have those down there for folks to look through those, so part of the gift that, that somebody connected and, and loves her family and, and her friends and, and all of that. And of course her career was in nursing, and I graduated in 1964, so uh, on that hand, uh, with 45 years, does that count right? Did we get that right? Is that the right amount of years? Yeah, there are different numbers there as well. So uh, then there, I wanted to share a little bit about, I'd ask out how many, she and Toby had met. And to, to, poor Toby has been in the hospital so uh, at the time of sharing. So I told him, I'm sorry, my friends, you weren't, you weren't there to defend yourself. So if the story is different, you're going to have to correct it with some other time. But, what was shared is that, um, I don't know, I think maybe he saw her first, and uh, it was out at uh, the mall, at the West Roads, was it West Roads Mall, Toby? Does that sound right? Yes, okay, we got that right. And he was uh, apparently following her around, okay? Now, I would say, knowing that, you know, uh, that what he was trying to do was get his, screw his courage up enough to engage her in that. But he didn't do that. Followed her and then uh, she saw him one day in a local establishment, right? And she got tired of waiting for him to approach her. So she went to him and introduced herself and that's how they got acquainted. Is that right, Toby? All right, all right. Don't, 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 don't make me stop and change now. I'm rolling on this yeah, as well. So. And then it was after that that he got up the courage to ask her out. And so they started a, a love affair and, and a commitment to each other that lasted 47 years. That's what we've got down there. And I know, Toby, you did not know what you were getting into, did you? <laughs> that you would somehow be connected to this big family here and all these kids, grandkids and great-grandkids and... Uh, not anything you ever asked for, but you have been blessed with, have you not? Yeah, he has shared that 
many times. And of course, uh, with Sharon, he got then connected with her friends and, and her co-workers. But what she's remembered as, as being one that would organize a lot of the fun events uh, and the bus trips and the connections. And of course, uh, the therapy group, this group met together five, was it five women? Did I get that right? How many were, how many were in this therapy group? Six, okay, six all together there. So they, they got together and they stayed together many, many years and they're still together. And of course, her, her many friends and colleagues that she worked with in nursing. My grandmother was a nurse, so I knew a little bit about what they did. And she always told me, well, doctors get all the credit, but nurses do all the work and do <laughs> all the care and all of that. And, and um, you know, now, you know, today, these nurses are starting to get paid a little more about what they deserve. And it's something that we have to learn to value you all the more, ladies, and also gentlemen as well. So uh, she had retired, and uh, she and Toby did a lot of traveling. I appreciate very much the pictures that were shared by the, the family there as well. We tend to, when, when someone is in poor health at the end of their life and in a, in a period of diminishment, we often just feel this sadness and, and grief, and it certainly was that. Toby had shared with me that uh, he had gone into the hospital and she at the same time, and she just had never come out from that time. And so that, that is a burden as well. But we don't want to just remember her for the way that her, her, her health failed in the end and was diminished in her life because the pictures tell a different story. This is a person who lived a, a full life and she loved much and she lived well and, and she had traveled much. They had been around the world two times. Um, she loved doing things for others, caring for others. Uh, she was good, uh, she liked to make things for others. She did crocheting and needlepoint and quilting and knitting and, and all the loved all those kinds of things. Of course, scrap booking we talked about. She, uh, she told me to, to go ballroom dancing. And she was connected more than just professionally and, and with her friends. And she was a member of the church and, and other groups here that organized the service. She was somebody who was committed to the Word of God. She was in a, a Bible study for many, many, many years and passed that gift along to her family. And it was Allie that shared with me the verse that, that was important to her. And, and that they chose, and we'll read from in the Gospel of John, but this passage from the Old Testament of the judge Joshua, a reminder to the people after Moses had passed, and they wondered how they would go on without this great patriarch, this one who led them so long, so well. And he said to them, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage. Be not frightened, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. <laughs> and these words that were written upon her hearts and, and in her granddaughter alley be written on ours today when we seek comfort and strength in the name of the Lord. I know that, that she has left, you see that if you've looked at the memorial pool, there are many friends and, and the family listed there, those who have gone before her, and, and many friends, of course, not in that. And we will gather those of us who are here today and hopefully share a little bit about her life, the gift that she was to our life. I've asked Allie to come and share some more personal remembrances of that, so, and to clean up anything I got wrong, right, Allie? My heart's with you. Allie, who is named after, or not intentionally, be her great grandmother? Yeah, yeah. So, mom didn't know that that was a name, and that turned out to be a family name, and, and we call that a God thing in the church, but. I went to my grandpa the other day and 
and when I got to Fremont, my sister let me know that I wrote my grandma three letters and she kept them in her safe and I found them. This last, my sister found them. And I was gonna read one, but it sums up grandma, looks like every old lady, she smells good and her cooking was good, but it was not good, so I don't know why I put that in the letter. <laughs> I just wanted to say a quick thank you for everyone who made it to here today and all the kind words and prayers for our family. I've rewritten this a hundred times to try to come up with the right words for one of my favorite memories I wanted to share. But I just, there are just so many, it's hard to pick. But I know whatever I say, I'm going to make my grandma proud. Grandma, I wrote you this letter to tell you thank you. Thank you for being there every step of my way. Thank you for being my rock and never letting me fail. I for sure made some crazy decisions in life, and you never once doubted me or gave up on me. You were always my biggest cheerleader. Thank you for being the best Gigi to Zaire and all the great grandkids. We will forever cherish those moments with you. I'm so thankful for the last getaway Zaire you and I had in October, going to North Fork to see Cousin Nikki get inducted into the Hall of Fame and staying at the hotel with you. And our, our dinner date last Friday night couldn't be more special, just you and I. Life hasn't been easy with all the challenges I've been through, but you sure made it a lot easier to handle. I will forever hold on to our nightly phone calls, and our, your hugs were the best. You, would, you and I would pray, and you would tell me that God has a plan for me, and we may not understand now, but we will love it later. I love the sharing we share with each other, as if our life was the back of a quilt with strings everywhere that looked like a mess, and we didn't understand why we have to go through so many rough times and ups and downs. But when God is ready to bring us home, he turns our quilt around and it's the most beautiful masterpiece. Grandma, you made one beautiful quilt. You made so much impact on so many people's lives and I thank you for being a nurse for 45 plus years. You always put everyone before yourself. Thank you to never say no to me when mom and dad won. I've had the privilege to travel the world with you and grandpa. My favorite was Europe because that was one place you wanted to go to see family heritage. You never missed a call to tell me good luck in my sports or you would be in the stands cheering loud. I would never forget getting random text messages from you that say, just wanted to check on you and tell you that I love you. I will also never forget getting a missed call from you and you leaving a voicemail that starts with, hi Allie, this is your grandma, as if the phone didn't tell me it was you. I will forever hold on to those messages that I can listen to your voice one last time. I wanted to say thank you for all your jokes and event and making life a lot more fun and adventurous. Like the one time you called me when you were trying to cook, you went to put something in the oven and your wig fell off and you started a fire. <laughs> or the time you were cleaning for Thanksgiving and you decided you needed to vacuum the bathtub. And you ended up on the, in the tub on your head and Grandpa found you asking, what are you doing vacuuming the bathtub? <laughs> Grandma, you are someone I wanted to hear most as, on Friday as I go into surgery for my brain tumor. You would tell me how worried and scared you are for me. I want you to know, Grandma, I got this. You are my guardian angel now, and you're going to make sure I do great and be by my side from above, and you'll still be with me every step of the way. I love you, Grandma, and I promise I'm going to continue making you proud and continue taking care of Grandpa. Rest easy, my sweet angel. Mm -hmm.
May our remembrances be acceptable, Lord, in thy sight. In all the ways that we were touched by in life, may we be truly grateful, even as we gather together to say goodbye. We do so with love in our hearts for what we have, for what we must give back, and for what we keep, Lord, in the name of Christ Jesus. Family chose uh, for many passages that she had, well, worn Bibles that, that she had been. Did you find those Bibles? <coughs> yeah. so, um, she was, a, as I said, someone committed to God's Word. And she lived in it and in her. So let's now open our hearts and minds and receive the gift of these words that touch to the life. And that touch ours as well. The words Jesus gave when he was ready to give up his life for us and, and explain to his disciples this thing that they couldn't quite fully grasp what was going to happen, how it would be different. But he knew one day that, that they would because he, he had faith in them. And he called on them to have faith in him. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you I go to prepare a place for you? And where I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself. But where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. And Jesus, who called people with different gifts and temperaments, uh, among them was Thomas, who was mislabeled a, a doubter. Thomas was one that wasn't afraid to ask the hard questions. He said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. May the Lord bless our hearts and minds with understanding from this to the of the Holy Word. Amen. You have words of Joshua that passing of Moses, and you have Jesus' words at the end of the, his life, and they're saying the same things, preparing people for losing someone who they didn't know how they were going to go on without them. And we're never ready to lose the people we love. But here's the thing. We never really lose them, do we? I mean, so I'm looking down here at family, and she's in you. She's in you in many ways. Some of you, she's in your DNA. <laughs> you couldn't get away from her if you tried, right? But also she's in her love of you and her desire for the best of you, for you, and all the gifts that she gave to you, those memories that you have, those parts of her, those values that she imparted to you, those things that you hold on to and you want to make your own and you want to share with the people you love. She's in that. She's in the care that she gave to others as a nurse. That's just as a Christian. She's in the example that she had for some of you. Who you wanted to be as a nurse, a professional human. She's in her friends, and her neighbors, the quality of the relationship that you have, and what she shared with you of herself to make your life more than it would have been without her. She is all of that. And all of us who knew her and loved her and have the privilege to be with her and not understanding, you know, how you're going to go on in this, surely we would all rather just have her with us. But we don't get to make that choice. We get to choose how we go on. Jesus tells the disciples, baby, be like me. Learn from me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you love me, live as I live. Have faith in 
being, knowing that I have faith in you? And he, they did. The disciples went on, trying their best to be like Jesus. Knowing how far they were from it. And if we read the Bible closely, we see the disciples, they were always missing the point. They were jockeying for a position. They weren't very particularly honorable or, or brave or wise. But when he when he gave himself up, he died for us and he rose again for us and gave to us the power of the Holy Spirit, they became something more. They became the people he knew they could be. They became like him. And the world changed because they did through him. And so the world's still changing and in the same way. If we will see him for who he is, that he is the Son of the living God, the Christ, and that our way to, to the fullness of life is through him. A life full and meaningful, a life of value, a life that is eternal and abundant that we have, even when we lose that life, we gain it. We gain the life that we didn't have without what was shared with our lives. So we gather here, and in our faith, we give thanks for Christ Jesus for all he meant, but we give thanks for the people that he has given to us to make us who we are, and for sharing, for all those ways that she loved us, for all those ways that she did for us, for all that was good and right about her and, and stood counter to the meanness and apathy in the world today, we give our thanks and we ask for God's help to be like that. Through Christ Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life. Amen. I'm going to invite now the community guard to come forth and to share with us their ritual. Nebraska Nurse Honor Guard is privileged to present this ceremonial tribute in honor of Sharon McCabe, LPN. Nursing is a calling, a lifestyle, a way of living. Nurses here today honor Sharon McCabe, LPN, and her life as a nurse. Sharon is not remembered by her years of service as a nurse, but by the difference she made during those years by stepping into people's lives, by special moments. We invite all nurses to stand and remain standing in Sharon's honor. Would everyone please join us in the response of this tribute with the words, Sharon was there. When a calming, quiet presence was all that was needed, Sharon was there. In the excitement and miracle of birth or in the mystery and loss of life, Sharon was there. When a silent glance could uplift a patient, family member, or friend, Sharon was there. At those times when the unexplainable needed to be explained, Sharon was there. When the situation demanded a swift foot and sharp mind, Sharon was there. When a gentle touch, a firm push, or an encouraging word was needed, Sharon was there. To witness humanity, its beauty in good times and bad, without judgment, Sharon was there. To embrace the woes of the world 
willingly and offer hope. Sharon was there. You may be seated. Sharon McCabe LPN. We honor you today with a white rose. The white rose symbolizes all that nursing stands for. Comfort, kindness, gentleness, courage, and unwavering devotion to duty. We present this rose in appreciation for being our colleague. Sharon McKay, LPN. Sharon McKay, LPN. Sharon McKay, LPN. We officially release you of your nursing duties. This lamp symbolizes knowledge. It is lit at the beginning of the nurse's career and extinguished at the end of that career. At this time, we present Sharon's family with the Florence Nightingale lamp. Thank you for allowing us to honor our colleague. Let us pray. Will we pause one more time to offer up thanksgiving and blessing for Sharon's life. We thank you for the truth that have been shared today by those who knew her, loved her, worked with her, her friends, family, from all of us who were connected to her and her yeah. way some small way that we can report. I know there have been a lot of words today, and we know that sometimes, like today, words aren't enough. Thank you for the gift of tears and laughter and the other ways in which you have given us to express what words are too deep for. And Lord, continue to minister to us, to this family, and all those of us who miss her and loved her, we must give her back to you, the strength to, to carry on the way she would have us, to continue to be a, a presence like hers, a positive, caring, healing, guiding, wise, compassionate, and all the gifts of her love to all the people that she has shared that with. We give our thanks and praise. Be with us now as we go from this place to a place where we would share less formally a meal together and minister to each other. Bless the food we have, the hands have prepared it, and the fellowship shared.
and all be in the name of Christ Jesus. And we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, would you please stand? We prepare to go from this place. We remind you uh, just follow uh, the casket and then the nurse guard and the family will go out and downstairs for a meal that you're all invited to be a part. Go in peace, my friends, and know that the peace of God go with you now and always.